This is Christmas 1943. There's a war on. Men the world over are destroying each other. Be ye kind one to another, seems the hollow teaching. But out in the cold and silent desert, the star still shines tonight. Peace on earth seems a mockery, but goodwill to men exists because of these people who follow Christ unselfishly, giving and sharing. Truly, inside and outside the barracks, a white Christmas. And will people learn? Look at this. Topaz still matters. This did not occur in a foreign country under tyrannical dictatorship. It happened in America under the flag which stands for liberty and justice for all. And yet today, what's happening today, ladies and now, gentlemen? Now this is something that everybody needs to think deeply about. Violations of constitutional rights. We had the Constitution to protect us in 1942, it didn't because the will of the people wasn't behind it. The Constitution to protect us in 1942, it didn't because the will of the people wasn't behind it. This is uh, the replica. But the bunks are from Topaz. These blankets, they were issued to their World War I surplus. They really keep you warm. Is it itchy? Yes, I had to use them when I was a kid. That's what I was wondering. And you definitely wanted a couple of sheets between you and them. Um, they had one plug, and the plug was an attachment to the light switch. The furniture they had, other than the bunks, was made at camp. And so all the tables and chairs were made out of surplus lumber from the camp when they built the uh, barracks. Each, each uh, apartment was issued a World War surplus army with burning coal burning stove. So when you say apartment, like this. So like this, would, would this be like one family or more than one family? Well, this would probably be one family. I think they could fit up to six in here or would yeah if you had more than that then through this door there would be another barrack and you'd have two buildings the closet was built by the men on camp so you had a little bit of privacy outside of the bathroom well you had a little bit of privacy but there's no insulation in these walls yeah so you're freezing and so when you talk, you talk oh you know, they could hear yeah sure. yeah oh look Military uniform in 1943. They were um, they convinced the military, the Japanese unit, they had enough people to make two units, and they did. And they served in Italy with distinction. It was the 100th and the 142nd, I believe, 442nd. Wow. Uh, baseball was a big thing because baseball was big in America. I find this story fascinating and heartbreaking nilson akagi quote with our loved ones back at home in concentration camps we never dreamed we'd be liberating prisoners in german concentration camps liberating prisoners abroad the youngest of eight nilson was born in 1923 to jack and masano akagi by 1934, the family had served enough to purchase, saved, sorry, enough to purchase a 52-acre farm and nursery in Lindsay, California. In order to avoid forced removal, the Akagi family accepted an offer to work for a sugar company in Idaho. They sold their land for pennies on the dollar. Nelson remembers having to abandon the tomato crop just as it was ready to harvest. At the age of 19, Nilsen Akagi walked 14 miles through snow in order to join the army. After training, he was sent to the front lines in Italy. Akagi's 522nd artillery team rescued the famous Lost Battalion, surrounded by German forces in France. 
Once inside Germany, a Kagi's unit liberated Jewish prisoners from one of the many Dachau satellite camps. After the war, Akagi lived in Salt Lake City working for a company building missiles. Fascinating. Near Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt ordered the forced relocation of over 110,000 Japanese Americans and Japanese immigrants. The footage you are about to see was filmed in secret between 1942 and 1945 by Dave Tatsuno, an internee at the Topaz camp, located in the Utah desert. In an interview recorded after the war, Tatsuno describes the footage he captured. It was taken secretly behind a barbed wire when it was not supposed to. During the war, you're not supposed to have cameras, right? Had to turn into the police department. Tatsuno's documentation of life at Topaz is one of only two home movies to be included in the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress. It represents one of the most significant visual records ever captured of the World War II Japanese-American internment experience. I'm on the desk one day, and uh, the, the director of the cooperative, the government man, Walter Hundrick, I was standing next to him. And all of a sudden, he has a camera, and he was taking a shot. I said, please, hey, Walt, I gave my light out to have my camera here now. You know what he said? Dave, where is your camera? I told him, it's in Oakland with a friend of mine. One day, he comes to my back with a camera. And he said, Dave, be careful. Don't take it near the fence where the guards are. Oh, look at that, you baby. Even behind the barbed wire. Oh. Having done it secretly, I couldn't take open shots too much. There's some of the, you know, very intimate shots. That's a good quality camera he has. Holy cow. This is not a sale. They're trying to get some very difficult to get merchandise. We had to bring bar on steel to get some of those things in those days. You can't realize it now, but wartime shortage, you see. And here we have the dust storm. This was taken on a warm Sunday afternoon, and everyone had to keep their windows closed, shut tight. And it was very hot, no air conditioning, and the wind blew, and the dust blew, and the dust would come inside the cracks and the windows and the doors. Hot, dry, and dusty. And you stay cooped up inside your barrack. And they came from California, the, the coast. So this was probably, like, way bad for them. And we have some snow in Topaz, but it was being very cold. Oh, no. Most of the people who were in Topaz were from the Bay Area, so they were not quite used to the weather. That's an understatement. He's a very positive man. They have now announced that the coast is reopened to evacuees from January the 15th of 1945. So this is a group saying goodbye to some of the people who were fortunate enough to be able to go back to their homes, their home to go back to, but many didn't know where to go. And then after they leave, all the people who came to see them off, they feel forlorn and sad because they have to go back to their barrack 
and they didn't know when they would be able to get out. In 1945, Dave Tatsuno and his family left Topaz and returned to San Francisco. And now we're leaving camp. We're saying farewell to Topaz. The footage in this video was edited down from the 48-minute silent film, Topaz. Audio from Dave Tatsuno's interview is courtesy of Wendy Hanamura and Emiko Omori. <laughs>